Yeah, I'm looking for the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. um, Who are you looking for? The sheriff or the um, uh, his second in command? One or two. And you are. Hmm? Your name? Uh, I didn't want to give it. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I, don't, I didn't want to give it right now. You don't want to give your name? Right, I just wanted to talk to him just for a moment. You just want to talk to him? Mm -hmm. Jay. Uh, I'm sorry, can I help you? I just wanted to talk to the sheriff or the second in command. From the sheriff, which I think is the, It'd be the chief. captain. No, it'd be chief. Chief. We, we we have a sheriff and a chief. Do so, you? So yeah. Okay, because that told me the chief would be police though. No, sir. You got a chief of sheriff as well too. Yes, sir. Okay. We have two colonels. Colonels, okay. That's so, who the other guys refer to as colonel was his. Okay, okay. So which colonel do you want to see over correction division or over patrol and investigation division? Over the sheriff's department. Um, over the sheriffs that handle duties and responsibilities at the courthouse. Okay, so that, okay, so you want, want to say, yeah, this, he's not giving a name, what is your name? Okay, America. Okay. I'll, uh, Deborah Perkwood and she's name of the colonel's name. All right. Okay, Just thank you. Just have to see right there. Sometimes they're, I mean, it depends on if they're at a meeting or something, you might have to make an appointment. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey, you're good. You can have a seat on the top. I appreciate it. Who are you here to see, sir? I'm sorry? Who are you here to see? Um, one of the, uh, was Strong. it colonels or the uh, sheriff? Oh, you have to have an appointment with the sheriff. Well, okay, well, one of the colonels would be fine, or yeah, whoever's oh, yeah, below no, him. All the colonels are in the meeting, but Dale Perkins said that she'll come and speak with him shortly. But he's asking what's going on. You don't have to have a seat. Everybody's just out of the way. I mean, they're in the meeting, they know what you're doing. Right. Uh, who's the highest person that's not in the meeting right now? It's going to be Deborah Perkins. She'll be coming, and like I said, she's, she's, it'll be my lieutenant. You want to talk to my lieutenant? Um, no, I gotta go higher than the lieutenant on that one. Yeah, that's, everybody else okay. in the meeting. Okay. Um, any idea how long the meeting's gonna be by no. chance? You know how long they've been in the meeting? I, I don't know, sir. Okay. I thought it just went in the meeting right before you came. What time is it now? Do you know by chance? It is 10.30. Uh, still too far before lunch. <laughs> so if it's getting close to lunch, it'll be getting out here quick. <laughs> Probably get, I believe they're mean. They're probably going to be getting out for lunch. No. What's your name? He won't give it. No. Huh? He won't give it. Yeah, I, I didn't want to give my name. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why I was waiting for somebody to speak yeah, to. Yeah, I was having spoke with him for a short time. Uh -huh. He said, uh, you know, if you ever come and talk to him. Cal said, you probably gonna have to make an appointment. He said he's gonna come back out here and talk to you. All right. Okay. All right. Appreciate Cal. it. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, how, Hello. Are you, how are you, sir? Doing good. All right. I'm Sheriff Davis. Oh, wow. Yes. I got the sheriff himself. Yes, sir. How are you? <laughs> Doing pretty good. All right. Um, Can we help you? Yeah, I just actually wanted to talk to you just for like three minutes if you have three minutes to spare. I, I will in just a minute. I'm going upstairs to, to a meeting right now. If you can wait just a minute, I'll be happy to happy to talk yeah, to absolutely. you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Hey, how you doing? Huh? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? All right. Doing good. Doing good. Huh? Oh, there's the sheriff. Talk to him directly. No. Thank you, sir. Mm. 
Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good. <laughs> well, just saw the sheriff on the way out. He said he was going to come back down and talk to me. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So that makes it a little easier. Okay. Was there anything yeah. I can do for you? I, I don't know what your position is and what you do. <laughs> so I, I'm they just the assistant to both of the colonels. Okay. Yeah, I was originally going to talk to the colonels because I like to try to handle things at the lowest level, mm -hmm. but he said he'd talk to me on his way over. So. Okay. Um, just had some issues and some concerns with some of his officers, but okay. also wanting to address some other things too. Okay. Um, All right. Well. Uh, well, do you? Um, I guess you, I'm asking this. Do you know if they have the records here for um, the officers' schedules, like past schedules? Um, that is something that would have to be compiled. So right. the state of Georgia has. Uh, an open uh, records act which right. provides provisions for yeah, getting information like that. Mm -hmm. So you can write um, a letter or sub submit a request to the records custodian and say exactly what you want. And what they do, they'll let you know because the, the state law also gives a fee schedule that we have to operate by and they'll let you know. Oh, well, fees can all be waived. Fees are subjective, you know. Um, but well, I mean, I don't. Right, no, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, just, just right, the, yeah. The, the fees are, are totally subjective; they, they don't actually have to be imposed. There's no law that says the fees have to, or subject to it to be imposed. Um, but a lot of counties impose fees for for services. Well, we get a lot of requests. We would. I'm sure well, Bibb County charges for just about everything, so I, I wouldn't doubt they wouldn't charge for there's, records. There's a lot of time involved in fulfilling open records requests mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, it's very involved. I worked in the office with a woman who did it, and it's, it's very time consuming. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. How'd you do that? Well, like, we've got ways to go around. Like okay. You. Yeah. Right, well, come on in. You want to speak you. to me for a minute? Yeah, if you don't yes, mind. Come on I'll in. make it as super quick as possible. Yes, sir. Um, we can talk here in your office? Or? Yes, sir. Come on. Okay. Down. Thank you. Hello. Uh, this is Tanya and Kathy. Hey, Tanya. It's Kathy. Hi. Come on. Thank down. you. <laughs> oh, wow. Lots of coins. No, nah, I didn't want to hold you up. Uh, well, uh, anything because I got this on my staff up there. I'm going to move in. We'll get that one too. Okay. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I was over at the. Um, courthouse yesterday mm -hmm. um and i was um doing a, a journalistic piece over there mm -hmm. and actually i was following up on another interaction that i had with um uh, deputy kelly mm -hmm. over there um i had a couple concerns i just wanted to address to you real quick yeah. um are, are you familiar with what occurred yeah, over there I'm a little bit yeah okay. i remember the time before and i think there was some open records requests and some things that came through right that. um my concern and um and and we'll talk hypotheticals because yeah, you know nobody can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt either way. Yeah. Um, but hypothetically, um, Deputy Kelly was using his personal cell phone, which is fine, I understand, because yeah. of budgets yeah. and stuff like that, to record and confirm that he was creating a document. Mm -hmm. um, I captured it on video and most recently uh, published another short piece uh, to show where I actually used my yeah. better camera to zoom in to show that. Um, I went to go complain up there, uh, went back to complain about that because I, I don't feel that that was conducted properly. If there was a record that was produced, um, it was deleted because when another officer inspected it, he said it wasn't there. Um, one issue that I've seen occur and that other people have addressed to me is that officers are creating uh, investigations and uh, uh, open records or, or public records using private cell phones but when they're trying to be obtained there's no records to obtain because mm -hmm. they're either being deleted or they're creating investigations on people without going through the proper channels mm -hmm. but hey here's a picture can you look this up for me mm -hmm. off the books mm -hmm. and there's a concern for that mm -hmm. the other concern that I had was when I went back to complain, I walked into the door, and one of your other deputies there, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know his last name, mm -hmm. but the other deputy holl kept hollering at him calling him Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, that video is posted as well. Um, I was standing there, again, just getting B-roll for the mm -hmm. po portion of that, and he started giving some unlawful directives as far as, I need you to move from this spot to that spot, mm -hmm. or I need you to move. I moved, and he's like, I need you to move again. I need you to move again. So it's just flexing his authority. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but the concern that I had was that um, he started getting very hostile with me. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked him for his name. Mm -hmm. And when I asked him for his name, um, he accused me of having a weapon in my hand. Mm -hmm. And I asked this, I said, no, before you do that, this is a medical device. I'm using, it, 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 this was not what I had. I had a, um, I had a walking stick. Mm -hmm. And um, he accused it as being a weapon. I asked for his name again. He said, well, you can come up here and get it. I felt like that was entrapment because he already identified an object as being a weapon and then he walks up towards the counter and then tells me to approach him in an aggressive tone. Um, if somebody was not so level-headed as I am, would have walked up there to prove a point to get his name mm -hmm. and you just approached a deputy who has verbally identified you having a weapon mm -hmm. and that he technically by law he could shoot you because you said you had a weapon and then you approached him. That's a very dangerous situation. And he knew, well, it wasn't. He was just trying to escalate it. Yeah. Well, that's one of those kind of things that I, I remember the incident that happened, and you give me a little bit more details of what we had, mm -hmm. that, you know, we'll look into it, uh, and, 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 you know, based on any kind of complaint, and if you videoed that, then yeah. uh, it would be helpful for us to have that as our internal affairs. To right. Do B um, both, into it. all three of the videos are on there. The one with my initial one, which was all live, mm -hmm. so that's unedited. Un mm -hmm. All the videos that are on there are unedited, untouched. Yeah. Um, and if you go to, um, if you YouTube Central Civilian Auditor, yeah. and if this, yeah. you have an email address on here? Yes. Okay. Yes. What I can do is I'll email you the links okay. for all three yes. of them so you can see the encounters. Yeah. Well, what, here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sort of the decider, ultimately say, the chief deputy, the way our protocol is here, there's a, if a complaint is made, it goes through the process, our uh, Office of Professional Standards looks into it, the chief mm -hmm. deputy reviews it, and if there's a, a you know, violation or there's any type of, any, any type of follow-up needs to be done, he mm -hmm. makes that suggestion, and then I either I verify it, ratify it, or if there's a, you know, termination, those kinds of things, mm. you know, we make we make those decisions at the time. Well, we have to, we have to go through our process of, of uh, internal affairs investigation, right, to see if policies were violated, to see what, you know, to see what all transpired, okay. uh, to see if it followed under our sheriff's office policy. Well, as as a member of the public, yeah. my only recommendation is is training yeah. uh, for these guys. Yeah. Um, and, and then and you, my make a, and you make a good point. I mean, we right. have uh, we have we have talked about that. We've instituted some training. We want to get some training for people. We even talked about it in the staff meeting the other day about mm. uh, training for if a person is in a public space, uh, and if they have a right to be in that public space themselves, they also have a right. If they happen to have a camera to to film that. Oh, really? That's yeah. awesome. I'm glad yeah, you that's, that's the way the Georgia law is. Right. Uh, you walk into the uh, you walk into the lobby of the, of the courthouse. Uh, you can you can film. Uh, however, there are some caveats to that because the courthouse is a secure location. Head west on Oglethorpe Street toward First Street. Then shop right onto First Sorry, Street. Sorry, I apologize. It's uh, give me directions. Uh, it's it's. I apologize about that. That's all right. The courthouse, in some ways, is kind of like the jail. It's a secure facility after a certain point. Right. And uh, if, if, if a person comes in, what a normal person would see as you're walking in and you see the stuff, but if we see uh, something that indicates that a person is really watching our procedures and that sort of mm -hmm. thing, and that kind of gives some cause for concern because even on the open records, anything that shows deployment of staff, it shows tactics and that sort of thing, you know, if it's a document that shows that, you can't really, you know, you're not supposed to release that because it's like a Homeland Security exemption. So if a person is just, uh, typ typically if you're going in the courthouse and you have business or if you're in there, you, you want to film or you want to just be there, then that's, that's good. But if it looks like... And I don't think that would be the case in your instance. No, because no. if you have somebody that's trying to plan uh, some kind of a uh, some kind of event, then you would think they would stand there because they would want to look and see what the flow of how our people do their job, so they could you know figure a way to to, to get around it. Okay. So that's sometimes they have to be careful of 
of uh, you know how if somebody's watching or, or it looks like they're kind of trying to gather information about how we do our job but mm -hmm. if you're just coming in and you just as, as a normal person that is going through their business in the courthouse that that space up to that uh, where the metal detectors are and all like that that's that's kind of public and what you can see all around there is is kind of public if you can right. see it with your eyes you can see it with a camera right so we you know sometimes our folks get a you know it's a training thing i agree right. with you it is a training thing and, and we have it sometimes out on on, on wreck scenes or, or crime scenes and that sort of thing people will come up and the deputies will say but if they it's like the media mm -hmm. you are the media way if you're standing over there and you're outside the crime scene tape uh you can film all you want to uh, and so that's what we told our people if you don't want them to come place a certain point you need to set up a barrier you need to set up the perimeter of crime scene tape or have a deputy standing there saying no this is as far as you can go exactly uh absent that uh the, the public has has access uh to that and if they're on the other side and they got a camera mm. you know if whatever they film is whatever they film if it's something you can see with your eyes then it's something you can see with your camera um, can I ask you a follow-up question yeah. pertaining to that, if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. um, some of the times when we're on location actually recording mm -hmm. these officers here, here in Georgia, yeah. um, that they'll say that we're interfering because we're recording or we're within a distance from here to you mm -hmm. that, you know, on, on the public side, walking public right away. Yeah. We didn't approach. It just happened to be, a, yeah. you know, within yeah. that distance. Yeah. They tell you to back up and you back up and they're still saying that you're hindering an yeah. investigation. Well... Uh, that, that's just some things we've observed I don't see that. and that's that's one of those kind of things I've been there I've been this is my 40th year at the sheriff's office oh congratulations second, <laughs> second term of sheriff so I, I've been I was a patrol officer investigator I've done everything you can do at the sheriff's office I was a public affairs person for several years here at the sheriff's office so I understand the, the relationship between me but then you also have to understand you got a deputy out there working the scene there's mm. maybe somebody dead over there there's a bad wreck over there and people and everybody has their personal space right no, I understand you know that. and everybody and you got to think about it the deputy's there and he has a lot of potential weapons right there on his belt of course all of these things are in secure holsters or whatever but i've been there so if, if, if somebody is in close enough to where they can where the deputy feels like they could reach over and grab their gun or grab their taser or mm -hmm. grab their uh, baton or whatever they're going to be a little bit more wary of them uh, whether they have a camera or not well, I, that's that's understandable and so that's that's some of the things that that may happen in that but we try to uh as long as the, the and we see this with the media as long as they are uh at a safe distance they are on the other side of the crime scene tape they're doing whatever everybody you know it's kind of everybody lives and let live and, and that sort of thing but right. i've had i've had issues back in the day where you have some overzealous media people before we put up cr uh, crime scene tape you'll have a wreck where there's somebody dead on the road and, and they're, they're in their car and stuff there, and you see that there's a camera over your shoulder where the media guys over there are taking that and that's why mm. uh in the in the in the strictest sense of the law yeah if you told me not supposed to be there then that's on us if we've not set up a perimeter and said you can't come past this point hmm. you're you know you kind of invited that if you don't, if you don't well that. um there's nothing that i can find that's defined by law as far as distance to stay away from like when there's no crime tape as far as when there's an investigation or something and i'm not asking you to legally define anything because it's not there but just as a pr personal preference yeah, yeah. what do you think is um an average distance for an officer to feel that should feel okay with media, so to speak, when there's no crime tape or anything. Like, is it three feet, ten feet, I'd eight say, feet, twelve foot? I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, no closer than you know six or eight feet. Okay. Because think about this, and and see, law enforcement people, we're trained to think tactically. Right. And I'm sure you probably if, if, if go to YouTube and you can see these tactical videos. Uh, I'm okay. prior service myself. I was on special forces, so okay. I know exactly what you're referring to. Have you to. seen the, the, the videos where somebody's got a knife, and I think the 21 foot rule, if somebody's got a knife in their hand and they're mm. less than 21 feet away from you, uh, they, they, and you don't even, you don't have your gun out, or you don't have anything. Right. That person can clear that 21 feet and be on you before you can react and draw your weapon and, right. and, and defend yourself. So, 
So I'm not saying that you stay 21 feet away. That's far than here across the room. Mm-hmm. But just a respectful distance as you would in any conversation that you would have with somebody you don't know. If right. it's somebody you know and you you have an acquaintanceship with, certainly, you know, you may get up and just like anybody else, have a close-in conversation. But if it's somebody you don't know, and especially if it's a deputy out doing, out of sleep, he's right. out working, mm-hmm. uh, he's having to try to maintain that scene. He's controlling the, the situation. And so uh, that's why, uh, you know, a, a distance, I'd say no six, eight, ten feet, until you get to know the person, you say, hey, sir, I'm blah, blah, blah. And, right. You know, it may help. To, and I know you have your cameras and that, but mm-hmm. if you had some type of media, because most of the media have uh, like a, 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 a press. Or yeah, I, I have one of those. Press. I don't usually wear those. You know, like a press thing right. or something, you know, right. we have so many, you know, have newspapers and certainly you are uh, digital media, YouTube media, whatever. Mm-hmm. Media is media. We don't care if you work for Channel 13 or you're a freelancer like yourself or whatever. Uh, they all get the same respect or right. should under the law. So that's why I say, you know, it may help to if you had like a, a well, you didn't wear it here, but when you're out on a scene that you have that, that says media or, you know, whatever your group name is, it shouldn't matter, but at least the deputy can see that. So, oh, okay, this is a media guy. You know, because okay. we worry uh, that, you know, believe it or not, not everybody's a nice person. Right. And sometimes people could put on a camera and do that uh, with nefarious intent, that they want to come in and have the, the camera on or whatever, right. and may maybe intend to do harm to, to law enforcement people or do harm to deputies. And so, but on the same token, somebody could apply for a janitor job and do the same thing. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you're <laughs> I mean, exactly right. But you have to think about it, and you right. say you're special forces and all like that, and, no. and so you've been there. You know uh, when you're at a scene, and you, especially if it's somebody where somebody's been had some uh, things happen, or where something could happen, your radar is always up. Right. It's that deal. You, you hate to say you don't trust anybody, but your radar is always up to where that you know what's this person, uh, what's this person here for? Or what are they up to? Mm-hmm. Uh, can I feel safe around this person? Are they do it? Are they here to do us any harm? Are they here to do other people harm? You may not be there. We see a lot of times where we're at a crime scene, somebody's been shot or something. Uh, and uh, and somebody will come back. They're not trying to do us any harm. They want to get their get back on whatever happened at the shooting right. or whatever happened at this last incident. So, mm-hmm. so we're always having to be on guard and, 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 and watch out for what's happening. So some type of identification, uh, you know, could be helpful in that way. Uh, and once, if, you, if you're around, you know, Macon is not that big a town to work. If we see the same media people, we know everybody from Channel 13, 24, 41, all those folks, the newspaper. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, hey, Joe, blah, you know, we yeah, know. Yeah, I've you. actually worked with some of those yeah, in the past. Yeah, you so. so if we know who you are and you've been around, that familiarity, you know, uh, helps to build up uh, confidence and, mm-hmm. and, and, and helps to list, lessen the suspicion. Okay. So. Um, I guess the last question I have, yeah. if you don't mind, mm-hmm. is... Um, um, when I was over there last at the courthouse, I mm-hmm. talked to, I think it was the major. Yeah. Um, I had asked him if there's anything that he'd like for me uh, to look into or something that you guys are, may need as far as equipment or something yeah. like that. One thing he suggested was personnel. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually looking into that. Um, into that. Hiring. <laughs> You're hiring. <laughs> yeah. um, this, could be, this could be you. We're hiring. <laughs> you mind if I take this? <laughs> yeah, no, scan those. I got a whole, uh, I got a whole stack. <laughs> so, so is it, um, is it personnel issues as far as you're not able to get people in, or is it not you're not able to maintain the people? A little of both. A little bit of uh, both. Part of it is there's, there's several factors. Not everybody wants to get in law enforcement today. It's not just us. It's kind of across the board right. of people who uh, it's hard to find people who want to get in law enforcement. You know, law enforcement has been maligned some and some so some of that's kind of subsiding now, but mm. it's hard to get young folks in. The job market's real good, so there's a lot of other jobs that people can get mm-hmm. that aren't law enforcement. Our particular problem here is our starting pay is so low 
that uh, like that 24 I think I saw well it's about 32 okay that was and, the old posting yeah, I saw way back, okay uh, about 32 and so uh, our, our starting salary is so low as compared to just about everybody else around us and so you can imagine if you're starting at 40,000 in Monroe County we're starting at 32 here why would you come here why would you come here right. and you get a, a a quarter of the amount of workload in Monroe County that you do here. So those kind of factors. And then uh, some things that, you know, uh, that people were worried about, the pension benefits. So there's a lot of factors that cause right. our place not to be as attractive as some others. We're developing a little, a little written piece to get people out there to, to let people know what I've done. Just kind of we've, we've gotten through to get a pay scale study. We, we try to give them a little bonuses along the line. So there's a lot of things that's been in the in the works, but we've just not quite been able to seal the deal to, you know, get that pay up. So that's mm -hmm. part of it. And then you have other people who are here that they get recruited by these other departments. You know, <laughs> they get off, sniped from other companies. <laughs> right. More. So that's what happens. We do mm -hmm. the same thing here. Basically in law enforcement, we're just taking swapping players, you know, they right. work for this agency for a while and they come up here and then they go someplace else, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the challenge as far as as far as personnel. Well I'm looking into it as well to see what I can do to help you guys out. Mm -hmm. Um request a lot of information. Um, trying to see if I can compile some data for you guys so that you can use yeah. Um, yeah. in these presentations. Well I appreciate that. And uh part of it is is you know, as far as uh you know uh, you know, we get equipment, we get all that, that that kind of stuff, and so we're able to get that. One of the things we're fixing to do now, talking about cameras and stuff, we're fixing to put up some surveillance cameras around town mm -hmm. uh, to watch different areas, and we've been in a partnership with Georgia Power and Cox Cable to put up some places. They're going to put a couple downtown. We're going to identify some other places around town. Is that for traffic monitoring or is that just for yeah. crime monitoring? General. Okay. Some of it's traffic, some of it's just general uh, uh, people, I don't want to say people monitoring, right. just uh, event right. monitoring right. to that point. Like uh, when you have something downtown, it, it gives people a little bit of a feeling of safety if they have a mm -hmm. security note. Well, at least a digital record of what well, occurred. <laughs> because there's no right. way you can sit there. I don't have the staff to just sit in a room and watch these monitors and do all this stuff, but it it does. Uh, we had a pilot program of that going on, and we weren't able to watch it. But when something happened in that area, we could really pull up the camera and say, "Okay, this is what happened." Mm -hmm. So that's that. We're moving forward in that. See the rest. Of, you know, that'll take us up a few months, rest of this year, to get all that up and running and, and going. So so we're doing some things in that way, uh, but it, it doesn't take away from the fact we need some people. Right. That sort of thing. Well, I'll make sure I'll put that on the end of the video so yeah. people and yeah. contact yeah. numbers right. on there. And yeah, maybe there's a uh, recruiter's numbers and everything right now. Uh, which one would be best? That uh, that number there? Yeah, that's the well, that's the recruiter number. Okay. That's the recruiter number there. Uh, let's see. Where's, here's my card. Yeah, I think you already got Yeah, that. I think I've got yeah, one. That's yeah, that's all my contacts. Okay, I, I don't want to put that one on the main video. Everybody for... and their brothers got it, but <laughs> there you go. But that, those are, okay. any one of those you want to choose, I mean, that number's the same. We just, it's, the message is the same on every one of them, just about, except that the the, the pictures are a little bit different, so we can appeal to different different people, so we have them. Right. Uh, female crime scene officers, that, you know, it's just. I don't think I got any of those. Our premise, our premise is this could be you. There you go. You see, so we have different pe different deputies doing different things, and then you have uh, that's one we did a long time ago. This mm -hmm. you in the role of a lifetime. So, <laughs> does uh, Bibb County for the Sheriff's Department do they offer like educational benefits for their employees, like how some some agencies will? We used to have an incentive program, and we would like to maybe get that back one day. But right now we don't have it. We we the, the county didn't want to mm -hmm. keep funding it, so. A couple of years ago, we did away with the incentive, but we gave everybody a raise uh, that was more valuable than just the incentive. You know, mm -hmm. so we kind of uh, offset that. Awesome. But it is something that we're studying to give people. Uh, but any kind of educational or advanced of uh, advanced education that helps at promotion time. And yeah, right. Sort of so we take that into consideration at those times. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I've taken up more than That's three right. minutes. Well, I appreciate it. And, and Thank please you. give me your name again. Ed Todd, uh, Mr. Dunn. This is Central Civilian yes, Auditor. Right. I have just left the Bibb County Sheriff's Office here. And the meeting, the on-the-spot meeting that I got with the chief 
um, or excuse me, with the sheriff here, um, I was very, very impressed with. Um, he gave me an on the spot, on the spot um, attention, uh, set me up with a uh, an appointment to come right in to his office and we had a very good conversation. Um, got to hear some of, you know, their perspective and let them know that I'm, you know, we're working together here on some of the things and I was really impressed um, with the open meeting that I had with him that I got today and immediately instead of being hidden behind closed doors. Um, so I think that was really, really awesome. So anyway, guys, um, let me know what you think in the uh, comments. <laughs> I get my headphones plugged in. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think, uh, how the meeting went, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns too that you want followed up on pertaining to that, and we'll see what we can do on that. Um, and if you have it in your hearts, <laughs> make sure you click the like button and uh, subscribe. Thanks very much, guys.